copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Calling all cars, attention all cars, all points, broadcast number 213 regarding the Shanghai prisoner. No description of suspect in this case. That's all. Rolls and close. find the stores more crowded and traffic heavier than ever before. If your car has failed to catch the holiday spirit, if it hesitates on the start and runs unwillingly, it is high time you get a little shopping in its behalf. Be guided in your purchase by the biggest buyers of gasoline and those who drive the most. Follow the example of the men who drive your police cars and other public service equipment by always relying upon the greater reserve power and speed of Rio Grande cracked gasoline. Not only during the stress of heavier holiday traffic, but all the year round, this superior motor fuel powers more police cars, ambulances, fire engines, and other emergency cars wherever it is sold than any other brand. Turn in at the red and white Rio Grande station in your neighborhood tomorrow morning for a tank full of Rio Grande crack, the most highly recommended gasoline in the West. The finest Christmas present for your car and the motoring pleasure of your family that money can buy. The case we are to hear tonight was taken in the main from the confidential files of the office of the Stockton County Sheriff. We have therefore asked Sheriff Harvey M. Odell to prepare a foreword for our program. Tonight you will hear the story of a man who had an air of confidence about him that made this storybook adventure possible. He had one of the finest personalities I've ever found in a man. Had his abilities been expended in the proper direction, he no doubt would have been one of America's leading businessmen of today. He took what he thought to be the easiest way to wealth, and today is back in prison serving a long stay for his later activities in Stockton. No, crime does not pay, not even for the shrewdest and those blessed with personality. Rio Grande is proud to present the distinguished actor, Mr. Lyle Talbot, in the role of Peter Trim, the Shanghai Justice. <laughs> you dropped in. I was just thinking about you. That so? I thought I might be interrupting an important conference from the way the girl took my case history when I asked for you. Oh, think nothing of it. I was just closing that Smithson deal. Well, I thought you said yesterday that was a pretty big proposition. Well, yes and no. We'll net about three quarters of a million, more or less, but it isn't very important. Not as important as that golf game of ours, is it? No, I'll say it isn't. Hey, what time is it? Boy, we'd better get started. After you. Boy, a honey. Well, let's see where I go. <laughs> I get worse every day. Look at that slice. Oh, you'll straighten up. I doubt it. What's this I hear about you having a secret sugar refining process? Oh, <laughs> it's just a little formula I picked up over in Germany. How'd you happen to get it? I happened to run into a fellow I'd known over here for quite a while. He told me about it. He'd been working on it for years. Anything to it? Well, I don't know to be truthful about it. All I know is that he says he can extract sugar from marsh grass for less than it takes even to harvest regular sugar cane. Well, here's your ball. You better play it about 50 feet from the left of that tree yonder. Okay. Nice shot. Did you say marsh grass? Yep, that's right. You mean like that stuff that grows around salt marshes along the coast? Sure. Will that work? Sure, it'll work. Ever seen it? Listen, this process will absolutely revolutionize the sugar-making industry. Hmm. Why haven't you done anything about it? Well, I need capital. Oh, is that all? Ever try raising a half million dollars to put into something like this? Hundreds of times. The lead five cents. That's so? Yes, if capital's all that's holding the deal up, why, we can fix that up in no time. I can give you a list of names of fellows who could put up that much money without batting an eye. Then you're just the man I've been looking for. Now, 
Now, look at it this way, Mr. King. We all know that most of the food products we have today are refined forms of native grasses. Take wheat, for example. Now, wheat is nothing more nor less than a wild grass that has been dom domesticated, cultivated, and developed to its present state. Flour is a refined form of this grass. Yeah, but what's the connection with this process of yours? Well, sugarcane is in the same category as wheat. It's a wild grass, the same family as marsh grass. The family's, the family's name is Saccharum officinarum. Now, I don't mean that just any marsh grass will produce a high grade of sugar, but the grass found in this section, right here around San Francisco and a little way up the coast, that's the kind that has the highest sugar content. The supply is unlimited. All we need is a factory equipped to extract the sugar. Uh, how long will it take to get underway? <laughs> well, that all depends on how long it takes to get the company organized and get the necessary capital. I'm putting 50000 of my own into this thing, as well as a formula. Uh -huh. How much is Nobo coming in for? Well, uh, confidentially, of course. He's coming in for 50000 Well, you come back tomorrow and I'll give you a check. I want 100000 of this stuff after I've looked into your proposition. All right, Mr. King. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Now, Captain, I don't have to tell you how important the sugar industry is to this country. A man of your ability knows without being told that there's more money to be made in America today than at any time in our history. Why, look at Dole. What's he done with the pineapple? Pineapples are just grasses like sugar cane, wheat, rice, and all the rest. Why, there isn't a civilized country on the globe that doesn't use grass as food. Yes, but we don't call it that. All right. Is there anything to prevent us from calling our product something else? We can't very well tell the public that we're selling it marsh grass sugar, but when the consumer finds out that he's getting a superior product for less money, we'll be rolling in money before we know it. Sounds attractive, all right. It is attractive, Captain. It's more than that. It's a golden opportunity for the men who get in on the ground floor. Now, I'm putting in 100000 of my own and the formula. That doesn't look like a man who's afraid of a proposition, does it? Noble's down for 200000 and King's coming in for two and a quarter. This is a million-dollar concern, Captain. You can't afford to pass up an opportunity like this. Well, I don't know. Now, let's, uh, let's look at it from this angle. Last year, this country imported two million tons of sugar. That sugar was sold at prices ranging from five cents to ten cents a pound. Think of it. Five cents a pound for two million tons of sugar. The figure's incomprehensible. Now, we can cut into that market like a hot knife into butter. Sounds like a good thing. Oh, it is a good thing. Assume that we can market enough sugar to cut the import in half. That's a million tons. My process will give us a profit of four cents a pound on a sale basis of five cents. We can sell better sugar at about half the price. That's a profit of eight million dollars. Think of it. Eight million dollars. That's over a million and a half to you as your share. Of course, uh, if you wanted to hold a larger interest, that would be up to you. A million and a half. Trim, I'll do it. I want 200,000 shares of this. I can match Noble and King any day. But the dream of sudden and enormous wealth burst like all bubbles of like nature and the long arm of the law gathered in the loquacious Peter Trim for a stay in San Quentin. We find him now saying goodbye to the warden three years after the collapse of his marsh grass scheme. Well, Trim, what are you going to do now? Anything, so long as it's honest. Yeah, you've learned your lesson, have you, Peter? Yes, Warden, I have. I've had a lot of time to think things over in here. I've found that crime really doesn't pay. Of course, I didn't really do anything criminal myself. I was just unlucky. Uh-huh, yeah, of course. As a matter of fact, my sugar process is still all right. Why, all I need is a little capital. I tell you, Warden, there's millions... Right, of wait a minute, Tim. Hold your horses. <laughs> I'm not in the market for your get-rich-quick schemes. I thought you'd learned your lesson. I'm sorry, Warden. I hear you've got some prospects with some of the steamship people. That's right, Warden. I've got a chance to go to the Orient. Think I'll go out there and start all over again. Honestly? Huh? Oh, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> well, goodbye, and good luck to him. And I hope I don't ever see you again. Well, uh, in here. So long, Warden. Beg pardon, Captain. But a wireless just came for you. Well, where is it? Right here, sir. Well, well, let me have it, confound it. So, so, young Dollar couldn't get to the pier on sailing time. He will overtake us in a speedboat before we clear the gate, will he? Young Mr. Dollar, sir? Yes, Harold Dollar, the owner's son. See that you treat him accordingly. Aye, aye, sir. I suppose that's his boat coming now. I presume so, sir. Well, don't stand there gaping. 
Get the landing stage down. Man the rail. All right, sir. Well, Mr. Dollar, how do you like our boat this trip? I beg your pardon? Were you speaking to me? Certainly. Aren't you the only Mr. Dollar on board? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, now, what were you saying? I asked you if you were enjoying the trip. Oh, certainly, to be sure. I'm sorry, but I was thinking of something else. So I gather. Uh, what branch of the company are you going into in Shanghai? Sugar. Sugar? Of course, sugar. But I, I don't understand. Oh, uh, I'm uh, going to look into the sugar importations from China. See if we can't increase the company's revenues from that source. But uh, there are no sugar imports from China. Aren't there? No. Well, then we'll create some. Uh, uh, if you'll excuse me, I, I'll look after the, uh, the forward wind. Oh, fine. I'll go with you. Uh, no, uh, we, uh, we don't permit the passengers uh, to get near the machinery. Machinery? Uh, yes, uh, machinery. Oh. Oh, 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 I see. I'm so glad. Uh, I'll see you later, then. By all means. That's my future boss. I beg pardon, Captain. Have you seen Mr. Dollar? Yes. He's right over there by the rail. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, Mr. Dollar. Yes? I'm Jones, American Club, Shanghai. I was hoping we'd have the pleasure of having you as our guest while you're in the Orient. Well, thanks a lot. That's mighty nice of you. Not at all. We would consider it an honor. Your father always makes his home at the club when he's in Shanghai. Oh, yes, of course. You no, know, like father, like son. Yes, yes. Well, I'll be popping along. See you at dinner. Yes, at dinner. Nice fellow, Jones. A bit eccentric, but a swell chap. I beg your pardon? Oh, I don't believe we've met. I'm Joe Marshall. I'm attached to the court in Shanghai. Just got back from taking a prisoner over to San Quentin. Uh, San Quentin? Yeah, we board our federal prisoners there. Ordinarily, I send them over on one of the transports, but this was sort of a rush order, so I brought them over myself. <laughs> I see. Well, I'm glad to know you. We'll see a lot of each other, I hope. Yeah, I'll show you around. Some of the better places. Uh, bars, especially. <laughs> I'm especially interested in bars. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to like Shanghai. Yes, I believe I am. from the journal. Mind standing over here, Mr. Dollar? We'd like a picture. Oh, no, no, no pictures, please. You see, it's not generally known that I'm on the boat. I'd rather not have any publicity, please. Oh, well, will you give us a statement then, Mr. Dollar? Just what is the purpose of your trip? Well, purely scientific, I'm investigating the possibility of extracting a commercial product from bamboo. Do you mind telling us about it? I'd rather not. Uh, confidentially, however, it will bring enormous wealth to certain financial interests in China and make certain exporters in Cuba and the Philippines very unhappy. Yeah, it couldn't be used to sweeten things by any chance, could it? Well, you never can tell. Well, thank you, boys. Uh, see you later. Yeah, so long, Mr. Dollar. Thank you. You know what I think, Benny? No, what? I think he's nuts. Three months passed. Our scene is a courtroom in Shanghai. The case is that of the people versus Peter Phillips. Mr. Jones, you say you were a passenger on board the boat when Mr. Phillips came to Shanghai. Yes, sir. Did you know him then as Peter Phillips? No, sir. I knew him as Harold Dollar. Who introduced him to you as Harold Dollar? Why, uh, I know him. Everybody on the boat called him that. Then it was generally understood on board ship that this man, who calls himself Phillips, was Harold Dollar. Yes, it was. Did you ever see this man after you arrived at Shanghai? Oh, many times. Where? Why, lots of places. I understand he was associated with the Dollar Line offices, and he lived at the American Club. Are you connected with that club? Yes. I'm cashier there. Now, Mr. Jones, I show you this check made out to cash and signed Harold Dollar. Did you ever see that check before? Yes, sir. I cashed that check for Mr. Do Mr. Phillips. Did you see him write this check? Yes, sir. Did you see him sign it? Yes, sir. Is this the name he wrote on that check? It is. Please read that name. Harold J. Dollar. Now, you say you gave this man, the defendant, $200 in exchange for this check. Yes, sir. Then what you, did you do with the check? I deposited the check in the club's account, and it came back to me. With this slip attached? Yes, sir. Please read the notation on the slip attached to the check. Return because of improper signature. Then what did... I went to the bank, and they showed me Mr. Dollar's signature. Was it similar to the one on this check? No, sir. It wasn't. What did you do then? I went to the steamship company. They said the dollar was in London. 
I haven't been in Shanghai in six months. Did you see the defendant at that time? Yes, sir. What was he doing? He was filing some papers in a filing cabinet. What did you do? I called the police and had him arrested. Thank you, Mr. Jones. That will be all. Peter Phillips, it is the sentence of this court that you be delivered to an officer of the court and that you be taken to the city of Nagasaki, Japan, and that on or before June 19th, you be delivered to the commanding officer of the transport Sheridan, an American ship, and that you be transported to the United States, and there delivered to the warden of San Quentin Prison, and be confined for a period of not less than one year, nor more than three years. You may take charge of the prisoner. Come on, Philip. Okay, Joe. In a bar in Nagasaki, we find Joe Marshall and his prisoner, who, after hours of persuasion, has prevailed upon Marshall to celebrate Trim's departure. Good old Joe. My pal. Never thought I'd be going back like this. Oh, that's <laughs> too bad, folks, old pal, old pal. It's too bad. We, we all have to do it sometime, though. Have to do what, Joe? I... I don't know, please. What? I don't know. Hey, waiter, bring us another bottle. No, no, no. I, want, I don't want any. I don't want any more, Pete. I got. I, I got to get you on board a, a transport, and I don't want to go on no transport. I I want to go on a ship. I can't, can't help it, Pete. I can't help it. You you got to go on a transport. That's uh, that's the judge judge's order. Uh, let me see him. It's right here. It's right right here. It's just this point right here. It says deliver to the commanding officer. Of, of, Commanding officer of the Sheridan. Good, good, good old Sheridan. <laughs> and Sheridan, 50 miles away. <laughs> I always like Sheridan. He has the right idea. Sure, sure, he did. And he, he says, he, he says, war is hell. And, and, and it is, too. I, I, I know. Oh, no, that wasn't Sheridan. That was Grant that said that. That was that was Sheridan. Uh, uh, Grant said. Grant, Grant said. Uh, Lafayette, we're here. No, listen, Joe. That was Washington that said that just after he crossed the Rubicon. Oh, uh, Ru- wait a minute now. Wait a minute. There's a guy. Wait a minute. There's a guy over here at that table over here. We'll ask him. Come on, look. Talk to me. Say now. Oh, wait a minute. Listen, old man. Listen. We want you to tell a little, a little uh, argument. You see. Now I, I say hey, that hey, we hey, don't, oh. don't, don't, very good, good, good English speak yet, eh, but they uh, understand. Yeah. Right? Well, now listen. That, that don't make, that don't make no difference. You listen. Now here. I, I, cl- I claim that it was Sheridan hey, who. Hey, hey, excuse me, but m- m- maybe you b- b- better ask someone oh, to that. Uh, oh, how about your friend here? Oh, he, 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 he too oh. drunk. He, he's going back to the ship. What? He, he don't understand nothing, no, how. Okay, well, let him sleep. Now, look here. I claim as Grant said that... He don't know no fella named Grant. Uh, all I know is it, 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 to be this fella. Mm, sounds like your friend here been very much sleepy. Yeah, it looks that way, doesn't it? He's <laughs> very f- 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 funny fella. He can carry papers around in his hand like that. Maybe he lose them, yeah. Yeah. Eh? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, he might have said. Uh, I guess I better take care of him for him. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you give him back to him when he's sober up, no? Oh yes, yes, sure. Uh, come on, let's have another drink. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah sure. I have an, another drink. I had lots of them. I uh, say, 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 you no, 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 something funny. No, what? Uh, I, 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 very, very, very peculiar fellow. I drink lots of whiskey, eh? Eh, then I no remember nothing. I always I can walk and, 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 and talk, eh? even English, eh? but I cannot really remember a thing. And when I am sober, I I, I, I just 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 stutter, and, 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 and I talk only sweet. Eh? Oh, that's so? all. Yeah, 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 sure. I just 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 stutter so bad that just, just, just sometimes Captain he say, go 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 away, you Hanson, go get get, get drunk. Then you could c- come back and tell me. <laughs> Ain't that funny? Yeah, yeah awfully funny. <laughs> awfully funny. Here, have another drink. Yeah, 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 sure. 
Jo, 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 Per, det er for for fanny feller. He snores sound like a foghorn. Say, how'd you like to take a boat ride? Yeah, 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 sure, sure thing. Where we go? Oh, for a little ride. Yeah, yeah, sure. Come on, let's go. You asked for me? Uh, yes, Captain. I have orders to deliver a prisoner to you. Let me see the papers. Uh, here you are, sir. Hmm, Peter Phillips. Three years for forgery, Sim Quentin, delivered by Joseph Marshall. All right, Mr. Marshall, I'll fill out this receipt. Where is your prisoner? Uh, he's below, sir. <laughs> a little drunk. We'll have to have some men hoist him aboard. Very well. Here's Sneed. Get a couple of the men to bring up a prisoner from the boat below. Aye, aye, sir. There you are, Mr. Marshall. There's your seat. Thank you, Captain. Well, I'll be shoving off. Pleasant voyage. Thank you, sir. Take care of those papers. Don't worry. I'll file them in their proper place. A few weeks later, a prisoner is delivered to the warden at San Quentin. Uh, take it easy. Uh, wait a minute. Look here. Uh, this is getting us anywhere. Uh, can't you speak English? Wait a minute. It's him. Yes, sir. Is uh, anybody uh, around uh, here who can interpret what this bird's trying to uh, say? Well, let me uh, see. Uh, we got a uh, chaplain here who used to know some Norwegian or something like that. Uh, bring him in here. Uh, now, wait a minute. Uh, I told you I didn't have any idea what you're talking about. Now, just sit still a while. We'll try to get to the bottom of all this excitement. You want to see me walk? Oh, oh yes, sir. See if you can find out what's wrong with this guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gabil, it's from here. Yeah, yeah, it's fully and so blah, blah, blah. Hey, then he has to talk. It's still. But how did you happen to get into this place? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the thing? I didn't know the sack. In one to the trap, my in saloon. Uh, I said, I said, I'm going to ship it. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you get in? In, 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 in. Who was this man? Yeah, 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 yeah. Did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, how did he say, 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 who knew me first? Huh? What's he say? He says a man met him in a saloon in Nagasaki, and the man got him drunk and put him on a boat. That's all he knows about it. Well, who was the man? He doesn't know. Well, according to the records, he was a court officer. Uh, say, you, uh, was this man who put you on the boat an officer? You know, a policeman? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm waiting to hug the turn man. Well, uh, would you recognize him if you saw him again? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I don't know what to make of this. His commitment's in good order. I've got ample authority to hold this man, yet somehow I, I don't believe he's the right man. Obviously, the name Phillips is an alias, but, but what's happened? Maybe there's a possibility the man's telling the truth. Well, there's one chance we might try. It's slim, but we can let this man look over the mug books. Maybe we've got a picture he'll recognize. That's assuming that his story's true, of course. At any rate, it's only right and just that we try it. Are you positive, Johannes? Yeah, 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 that there, my mom, and some you, some you, my full of Shanghai, my maple ship. But he says this is the man who Shanghai. Huh? Let me see. What? Why, that's Peter Trim. He just got out of here last February. Evidently, he's the man who's done the job. I'll check his fingerprints against the record card Johansson brought with him. We'll soon find out if he's the man. <laughs> The warden, convinced that by some means an innocent man had been railroaded to prison, began a searching investigation. Contacting the Federal Department of Justice, the warden took further steps to release the Shanghai prisoner. Federal investigators had by now traced Peter Trim, alias Phillips, to Manila. Now look, Major, you know the sugar content of the pineapple. You know what Dole has done in the Hawaiian Islands. Everyone does. You'll admit that Cuba has practically a monopoly on the sugar business. The figures speak for themselves. Take four million tons of sugar... That's a lot of sugar. That's too much sugar. <laughs> well, it is a good-sized pile. But look at it from a dollar and cents angle. By my process, we can produce sugar from bam bamboo sprouts at a price that can compete with the finest thing Cuba can produce. We can flood the market with a better sugar, produce for less, sold for less, and that will bring enormous profits to those of us who invest in the thing now. Well, uh, how did you happen to come to the islands with this proposition? I should think you'd have more luck raising capital in the States. <laughs> 
In a way, that's true. But in the States, there are too many uh, uh, restrictions. Besides, uh, bamboo doesn't grow with any degree of success in any of the States. I've tried various forms of grasses and canes, but nothing gives the results of bamboo. Why don't you try China? There's lots of loose money floating around there. Well, uh, China has certain drawbacks also. I found that the grade of bamboo you have here in the islands is fine enough to produce a higher grade of sugar than you'll find on the market today. All we need is capital. We have the formula, we can get the machinery, but we have to have capital to operate. Now, the men who get in on the ground floor of this thing are going to make a killing. Well, I'll think it over. Uh, see me tomorrow. And won't be necessary, Major. This gentleman won't be here. Such, what do you mean by that? Who are you? Inspector Henning, Department of Justice. He's been looking for you for some time now. Who... Who is this man, Inspector? This man is one of the smooth, smoothest confidence men we have around, Major. He sold that sugar scheme I overheard him telling you about to dozens of men in the last few years. You mean he hasn't got a process for making sugar from bamboo? Bamboo? Huh. This bird couldn't get sugar out of a sugar bowl. Say, Trim, uh, there's something I'd like to know personally. How'd you get those commitment papers signed and returned to Marshall? <laughs> that was easy. Poor old Joe was so pie drunk, I took the papers. Delivered the Swede to the commander of the Sheridan, took the papers back and put them in Joe's pocket and beat it to Manila. <laughs> Joe thought that he'd delivered the prisoner himself. <laughs> I'll bet he's still wondering how it happened. Very probably. Well, this time there'll be no celebration. Just the return of the Shanghai Jester. <laughs> of Rio Grande Cracks Gasoline and followers of Calling All Cars. As you, of course, appreciate, the underlying reason for this program is to acquaint you with the true merit of Rio Grande products. At the same time, the guiding light of this series is a high resolve to contribute to the public welfare by establishing and emphasizing the truth that crime does not pay. By the very prominence we give to the misdeeds of men, we acknowledge that the lawless are only an infinitesimal portion of a law-abiding citizenry. There is more good than evil in the world, more kindliness than meanness, more charity than hate in the hearts of men. And so as we draw near the day of greatest import to all Christendom, we of the Calling All Cars cast join with our sponsor in expressing the wish that there may be more of peace on earth and goodwill toward men and in voicing the hope that all of you may experience a most joyous Christmas season. And again we hear from Sheriff Odell. Trim's trick was a smart one, but he found that the arm of the law was long and exceedingly swift. He was tried in Manila and sentenced to serve four years in Billabib Prison, Manila. This time, there was no celebration and no boat trip. He served his time, but in 1933, he repeated the same offense in Stockton and is now serving his sentence in San Quentin. The cancellation of all points broadcast number 213 regarding the Shanghai prisoner. Suspect in this case arrested by Department of Justice agents in Manila. That's all. Rose and Chris. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night. 